All right, well, Teacher's Day is a heartfelt tribute to dedicate, uh, or rather to dedicated teachers who shape the future by impacting knowledge and inspiring young minds. This global celebration acknowledges the invaluable contributions of teachers and their roles in nurturing generations. So in the spirit of World Teachers Day, it is our own Onye Quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> time to time to celebrate our own EC of fatherland hey. <laughs> as a teacher. Hey. So happy hey. World Teachers Day! It's an interesting day. Mm -hmm. I don't know what teacher made any impact in your life. You have any? What teacher made? I'm not sure that I have any. Maybe considering the kind of person that I am, I'm quite a distant human being. So I don't think that any teacher made a, um, a particular impact in my life, but. Teachers generally, I feel like they are not well appreciated. You know, for instance, if someone comes to you and say, I'm a teacher, you're very quick to be like, oh, so it's in this dismissive. Do you get? I mean, but I, I don't, because the truth is that, especially for children, they spend more time in schools with these teachers than they even spend with their parents. So if you're not appreciating someone who is taking care of your child, who is teaching your child and making sure that this child is a responsible human being. I, I, don't, I, I really don't know what else to say, but I think that teachers should be appreciated a lot more. And I'm very glad that there's, there's at least one day dedicated mm. to celebrate teachers. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mary, how about you? If I have a teacher, I think my mom. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. sweet. Yeah. You know, um, I think every day I'm just realizing, you know, how much impact. Uh, yeah, she has made for me. That's and so she sweet. actually was a teacher. Oh, nice! Yeah. That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah. And again, today is um. So I'm sure you people don't know them. Akanimo, yeah. Akanimo's birthday. Ak is uh, she used to be one of our co-anchors. So she turned turned for forty today. Ha, oh, the big four. Oh, I just saw. Correct. Then um, Kome Osalo. This one, Kome is also a friend of the house. Kome, Kome was at our party, the four-year anniversary, or oh, three-year anniversary party. Mm -hmm. It's Kome's birthday today. Today is quite a special day, because a lot of people right. just say, ah, hey, I've not wished yeah. one birthday, I've not wished one, but... So happy birthday to everybody. Everybody, everybody. You know, <laughs> Tomorrow is just a more special day. Oh, really? Yeah. What is it? What happens tomorrow? Oh, their birthday. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Happy birthday in advance. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, so what did we find in the news? Let me come to Mary, then I'll come to you, Dami. Okay. The Secretary General, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, Rebecca Greenspan, has stated that many developing and middle income countries are in a debt crisis. This is contained in the 2023 Trade and Development Report, which was addressed in a press release statement late Wednesday as published on the UNCTAD website. Gripson noted that amongst other key messages extracted from the report, the debt crisis has to be part of the discussions at the international level to be able to find the right solutions for restructuring debts in many developing countries including middle income countries and i'm sure nigeria falls among of course we're we're, we're an emerging place. economy or a developing nation and all yeah. of that mm -hmm. I, i'm sometimes i'm really scared when i hear the amount of um what's it called borrowing that goes on i think i saw in passing i didn't stop to read that story but i saw in passing that the Senate was um, like advising, or would I say, was counseling the president, warning against further debt, you know, um, like further borrowing and all of that. So, I mean, uh, it's a good thing to borrow. I remember. They write. Is that? They write. They can't write of things, you know. So the sad thing is, so there was a time, one of our leaders went to the UK, and. He took up the entire building. And these hotel rooms don't come cheap. The spending, what you spend per night is quite expensive. He was doing his seventh year then, you know. And he took up the entire building. In fact, they invited the Queen of England. So, I mean, I remember the story then that we heard was that, ah, so you have this kind of rich people. 
and people are fighting for debt cancellation. It's not going to work now. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, it doesn't make any sense because the kind of lifestyle that um, people lead in this country does not suggest that yeah. we're actually a struggling economy. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if, if we were borrowing and we're borrowing to build infrastructure, I mean, I'm saying I'm seeing debit a lot, but I know where the money is going to. It's not like yeah. I'm using it to go and buy a Gucci bag or something, yeah. right? If you're building, if you're building and you're investing, you're building, you're building, nobody's going to argue. So the challenge I have or the fear I have with some of this borrowing that I love, African leaders are borrowing, they don't borrow for, uh, what's it called, for capital expenditure. They borrow for recurrent. So they are borrowing to pay salaries. They are borrowing to... Those are not productive for us as a people. So when we continue like this, it's going to take, in fact, it will take the grace of God for us to be able to come out of that debt. Because you know? the debt keeps passing from of one government now, to, another. to another. And our reserves are really, really in a mess. So you know? Most, Where what do you think is the solution? The solution is for us to look inward and really be serious about it, right? Yeah. If we cut off, see, let me tell you something. I am hungry. Do you understand? But I know that, okay, I'm building. Yeah. I would keep my whatever aside and we're, it's, it's like it's like farming you have to be patient right but you see the, the issue with nigeria is that when you say be patient we don't see your actions being patient mm -hmm. so if you say the solution the solution would be investing in the things that would generate income mm -hmm. so look mm -hmm. away from crude look at the agricultural sector for instance you know look let us start to grow what we eat let's even just within the economy first of all boost the economy and stop being dependent on on forex so if we do that, we can boost our um, earning power at the same time, gradually, you know, rise above this indebtedness. It's crazy. And find a way to look within to solve our problems. So let's stop bringing, you know, because we're paying Forex to be able to bring people to come and help us build roads, do this. Why can't we find, find people within, within and, yeah. and, 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 you know, get the labor cheaper yeah. and keep the, the money within our economy? Let it keep going round and ah. round like that instead of going outside. Mm. What help us? Damn your story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so my story is a funny one to me, actually. Um, the Minister of Interior, Olubuni Tunji Ojo, says reforms are underway to simplify the passport application process with the possibility of Nigerians being able to begin submitting online application applications as early as December. Um, he also stated that one of the reforms the ministry is implementing in passport management is to put an end to the chaotic passport application process. I don't know, but I think that this particular, um, should I say policy now, has actually been in place since what, since 2020 or 2021? Because I remember, I remember seeing that you can apply online and just pay 25,000 naira, and ideally in maybe two weeks, your visa should be, your rather passport should be out. But you find out that even where, is it that the, maybe the website or something is even down to start with. And when it's not down, when you eventually apply online and pay, you then go to the passport office, maybe for capturing and something, and then immigration people are trying to frustrate your life because they are fighting for their own pockets. They are saying, no, should we, you want to go, because I've literally seen it happen in real life, where they literally told somebody, should we, you want to go and pay 25,000 naira? Who sent you a message? You will still come back here and come and pay under money, and I'm like, but is that not what they said we should do? Is that not the process that we are supposed to follow? So how come now you are saying that? And uh, why did we go and follow the process that the country said we should follow? Hmm. But because you are fighting for your own selfish interest. And so at the end of the day, I, my, I always say something: like Nigerians, we don't like each other. We just like to exploit each other at the very, at the slightest. Any, especially when there are people in power, they, they just feel like okay. I can do this and then go ahead to do it. Mm. Because really, who's going to question them? Because if truly there was, there, there, there was a body or something that was going to question these people <coughs> and make sure that these things are actually going the way they're supposed to go, I don't think we'll have some people. Because these days, people pay very ridiculous amounts of money just to get their passport done. Not because if they register online, it won't be done. Because it is one thing to first of all even register online and you don't get to where you're supposed to capture and they don't tell you why did you go and do it. It's another thing for you to not even go through the entire process and your passport will be delayed for God knows how long mm. because you did not pay somebody to help you fast track it. Mm. Why do we need to fast track a system that should be working? You just, you just brought a soft point for me because I remember doing my son's passport. I paid three times. See? I paid three times because, first of all, the first person, when we, when we did the payment, it was a wrong location. 
Second payment was the fact that we couldn't capture in Lagos because we wanted to add his middle name and the middle name was not so we now had to oh, pay yeah, a third so time to, I did, I and we now went to Abuja. To Abuja. You know, why? But, 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 but to your point, right, I, I actually think it is the immigration personnel because God bless her, uh, Mrs. Adeshoko, anywhere. In fact, she was the one that eventually sorted. That why didn't you, I said I didn't want to stress her because she's quite a senior person in immigration's office, right? When I did my, when I reached out to her that I wanted to renew my passport, she sent me a link. When you finish applying, you've paid and all of that, let us know, you know, select your whatever. Everything was done online. I only went, mm -hmm. I captured, and I left. You know, but, and again, it happens like that anywhere she is, you know, in, in charge. So I think, again, it, it, the system will clean up. But you're now coming to say it uh, from December. Well, it's what what I'm, I'm it's already you this thing. You do not know that this uh, online, whatever, is already in Because I remember when I ordered my passport in 2021, yes, I knew fully well that this thing was in place. So I paid online. So I'm just like... No, I even did. I think it was seventy-five because I was doing um the ten years and I was doing mm -hmm. um the no, the more pages and all okay, of that. Okay, that's why you know. But for basic ones, I don't yeah. know. It's just you. Wow, you're a big girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And, and, and that pay that I paid is the official because I paid directly to the this thing from the portal, you know. And she was the one that said. Please, when you have done the payment, you've done everything, just let us know. Then we will schedule you for captioning, you know. And you just like to do like this. And, uh, so let them know that they have power. Because <laughs> why are you trying to pay somebody it's to do something that should work? Yeah, well, I don't get it as well. All right, so today so, is actually a very sad day as well. Um, it marks the 11th anniversary of Alu killings, a tragic event that took place um, um, in River State and took the lives of um, Chiadika, Biringa, Favor, Erikena, Ugona, Obuzo, and Toku Lloyd um, in River State. As I said, the young uh, individuals were brutally lynched and burnt to death for no reason. Mm -hmm. um, it is important that we remember um, that they were all sons of, firstborn sons of their parents. Very, very heartbreaking. Um, I remember the movie that ah Linda KG did. Oh my goodness, I cried. I like, like, literally, I cried to the point that I didn't even have tears to come out anymore. It was cried really and crude. No, 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 the, the <laughs> cry was heavy. You know why? Because I was just putting a lot of you know, putting myself in the, in the shoes of the boys, in the shoes of their parents, mm. in the shoes of their friends. It was just so much emotions, like, it was too deep for me. Like. I cried for days. I said, what is this? You know, and, you know, it, it's painful. It's painful. And, you know, when we ask for leaders that are empathetic, they are compassionate, this is why we ask for things like this. Because so many needless deaths has happened in this country. So many people have died just for just being Nigerians, just being, in the, you know, in the wrong place, right? So I... I it's important that I'm really commending daily um, times for remembering this because it is very easy for us to forget. Yeah. It is very easy for us not to remember that these things are actually things that are the reason we are always, whenever an election circle comes, we're always demanding for, you know, right. good governance and all of that. But thank you to um, daily um, times for this. And our heart goes out to their parents, honestly speaking. I don't even know how. You can comfort anybody, you know, after, after how many years of investment, you know, sleepless nights on these children and somebody just wakes up and thinks it's okay to take their lives. Yeah. Sad. All right, so we'll take a break now. When we come back from that break, we want to discuss the certificate saga. Stay with us. We'll be right back.